I heard a hit. You got it down. It's down. Is that it? That was pretty quick. We knew there was dover in the pines and we just couldn't uh we we're hoping to be in front of them before they come down there. But I hear it. Yeah, you definitely hit it. I heard the thud. I wasn't quite zoomed in because there was too much brush, but let's see. It drug itself down there to the bottom. Another offhand shot. Yeah, that was even further than last year's. Huh? That was even further was, than last year's. It it same area. He shot it from that tree there. Now you might add another 35 yards to it. Yeah, it, we, we didn't have no time there. I spotted them and told Ron, hey, right there the deer are. And I was trying to get my camera focused. <laughs> and, uh... Looked like a pretty big mama doe. Yeah, it looked like a pretty good sized doe. I mean, I heard the, I heard the thud. I didn't... She might be behind this pine tree. I told you there's deer in them pines. You called it. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, we saw their tracks going in and we wanted to make sure we stayed on the far outside because these deer have been so pressured. They, it seems like they have a extra sense of knowing that danger's in, incoming. There, she's on the road, dead. You sure? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's another offhand shot. What do you think, John? Two uh, plus? I, I would say, I'd say at least 200. Yeah. You know, 180, 200, somewhere around there. Wow. She was looking right at me, uh, took my time. We'd been hoofing it through the woods. Yeah, we just so we just put on rate, about uh, three miles. <laughs> our breathing rate was just, uh, you know, <sighs> so I had to really concentrate and uh, get my heart rate done. And uh, that's it, man. We got her. All right. Yeah, congrats. Thanks, John. <laughs> all right. Hey, I want to put this on film. For all you people that, you know, oh, that's 6'5", uh, Creedmoor, and uh, Grendel, and this and that, and 224 Valkyrie, you know, I mean, there was an offhand shot 200 yards with the good old 30 out 6 and the results speak for themselves. Well, I thought it was kind of odd that she was dragging her rear end and she's dead because I thought it was a spine when I, shot. When but... I shot, I think the bullet hole should be... Uh, in the chest. That's really? What I saw. Oh yeah. Yeah. There it drug itself down here and didn't make it very far and boom, right there, dead on the road. Clear from out around the side of that hill. Way up there. It's right up there. Clarion. Four fifteen. What's that? Four fifteen right now. Okay. Well now you guys can see how Ron likes to drag his deer out this really good way. Keeps the head and stuff from catching on stuff. Oh yeah. Hold up the legs up behind the back of the head. There you go. Hey, uh just for the record, this is an old uh ring from my daughter's swing set back in the 80s and uh, some of the original polypropylene rope so hey we're yeah. recycling too yeah any deer with uh, an antler three inches or less yeah found out it's a button buck I mean that thing is huge it's a <laughs> it's a huge button buck um, but you know you, you, you try to prevent from shooting the button bucks but obviously i mean when you're looking at a, a button buck that is close to the size of some of the 
uh, year and a half old does that are around. And at that distance, I mean, in, in I, we, you really can't even tell that it has buttons. Very, no, very. No. Uh, I mean, especially not at that distance. And um, but hey, it happens. We've been hunting pretty hard today and uh, seeing tons of tracks. We got all this fresh snow, and I tell you what, you think you're going to be able to track a deer? It's amazing how many deer there are over here. So it's not like we're going to be hurting a lot of the deer population. There's still, even though we found some dead bucks and some dead does and stuff like that, and we've killed a pile of deer. There are so many deer in Wildlife Management Unit 2D. And we're in Clarion County, so Ron Ron knows how many deer there are. You know, uh, they are so skittish, so wary. Uh, if you've been shot at for two weeks and pushed and hunted, <laughs> I mean, they're going to see you before you see them. And I mean, their their alert mode is on super high. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. They're putting a lot of distance between you and them. They're trying to stay downwind of you. They're trying to stay in an area where there's a front door and a back door yep. that they can escape. So you really got to, at this point in the season, really push them to find them. Yeah. We caught some of these deer tracks coming up into these pines. The thing is, is uh, the way the wind comes, they like to hang on this side of the, the hillside. But the other problem is, is it's just a really narrow strip of pine. So you can't be rustling in the, the leaves or the or the golden rods real close to them or they're going to book out of there before they ever you ever even seen them so we stayed way way to the outskirts and they still were coming out you could tell when they popped out they were suspicious and we didn't have no time messing with the camera it was you know hey ron had tonight and going to be hunting early tomorrow morning was going to head home so i'm glad he got got some meat to take home and uh just a tough year of hunting, especially with the weather and everything else. It's just been been crazy. All right, Ron's gonna tell you a little bit about his gun. Hey, this 30-06 cartridge served our country in World War One, World War Two, Korea, well into Vietnam. Okay, why do people want to change it? It's like you've got this good thing going. And you want to change it with all these computer geeks and technoids, you know, and all wind drift, ballistic coefficients and that. This thing never has failed our country since 1903. Go with it. <laughs> now, what grain of bull are you using? Uh, 165 Hornaday uh, Spire Point Super Shock Tip. And uh, the powder is DuPont IMR. 4350. I think it's 42 grains. Don't quote me on that because I don't want you to blow up your rifle, but I'll tell you later. And uh, the thing is a one shot, one kill rifle. Yeah. I mean, it's never let me down. I originally started with a 308 and then I just upped it to this. And uh, I'll hunt with this for the rest of my life. I don't want to change. Yeah. You know, you don't kill the goose that laid the golden egg. <laughs> and that's all I got to say. Okay, well, when you watch the video of the shot we made today, after we skinned it out, that 165 grain uh, Hornaday Super Shock Tip with 54 grains of DuPont 4350. I just gave you the load now. Okay, that bullet hit it in the front shoulder high, ran along its back, blew out back by its spine and hind leg. So that bullet went in and went completely through the deer, high on the front shoulder, and exited out the back. I know this because when I skinned it out tonight, I saw the uh, wound channel. Uh, we're gonna continue this debate. Uh, we're sitting up here in Pennsylvania, up in Clarion County, and we're talking, and Johnny Nugent brings up an interesting point, that when you hunt with the calibers that are readily available, tried and true, and you ever run out of ammo, you left your ammo at home, you could go to your local Walmart, they stock it, and you're back in the game. Okay, when you start coming up with all these wild Grendels and Valkyries and all this, you know, chances of you finding that ammo in a pinch are going to be a little more difficult. Now, in defense of the Creedmoor, if you're shooting competition at Camp Perry, Ohio, at the Nationals, now, we're talking about a round desire designed to, you know, punch holes in paper. Now that's a different animal. But here we are up in Clarion County, 
and the average deer in Pennsylvania shot is between 35 maybe to 50 yards and you know the 30-30, the 308, the 30-06, uh, 243, 270, these are all tried and true. Why venture from them? And you want to spend thousands of dollars, you know, upgrading and buying dyes and buying bullets and buying, you know, high-tech scopes, then go for it. But my whole point is that all this is not necessary. You already have the gold standard. Go with it. Yeah. You know? Couldn't agree with that, that statement. Anymore. Don't talk to me. John says he's in agreement with that statement. It is How about it, Sweeney? You know, I'm more of a 308 guy, but I'm with him. I got him. <laughs> Okay. All right. Here's my point. The 6.5 Creedmoor caught fire, and it's been a popular cartridge. But like we were just talking here, now it's it's old news. There's a new kid on the block, the 224 Valkyrie. It's hotter. It's flatter. It's faster. And once again, it's these people that experiment with uh, ballistic software, changing solder angles, bullet types, and shapes. And, you know, I'm a 30 6 308 guy. That was a cartridge that proved itself since 1903 and served our country well in World War I, II, Korea, well into Vietnam. And I said, all these other countries, if you do your research, that shot 6.5 calibers, they found out that it wasn't enough. It was too light. It really wasn't doing the job. Fact is, the Japanese in World War II started with a 6.5, they ended up as 7.7. The Italians started at 6.5 Carcano. Now, then they went to 7 millimeter. Okay, 7 point, I can't remember, 3.5 or 2.5. Uh, the Dutch had a 6.5, the Swedes had a 6.5, and they found out that in combat and in real life use, that bullet was a little bit too light. It just wasn't doing the job. And, uh, you know, we have a 30-06 that's so tried and true. I mean, we're, we're you know, knocking them out left and right with that. We don't need all this high-tech ballistic software. What's it going to come to? People bringing in their laptops, laptops setting up a satellite dish, checking wind direction and slopes and angles. Do you think the deer is going to sit there and let you calculate how many mill dots or how many, you know, degrees of lead you got to do? No. An old man with his 30-30 that knows how to shoot will spank your butt and make you look bad. So, go so up. <laughs> that's the conversation we're having here at the deer camp. 5.56 five, NATO is smaller, has less powder, and that's so they all went from like 7.3s threes and six fives and everything, and now they're all either AKs. You just said that the newer, the newer, newer Polish models and everything are a five four five by thirty nine, correct? Yeah. So that's basically a five and a half mil bullet shoved into a into a AK-47 cartridge and the United States uses 5.56 NATO and then the other all these rifle cartridges have done nothing but get smaller and I agree with your argument but these guys are gonna say well this that that 6.5 Creedmoor was designed totally to punch paper no one's ever gonna say oh it was used for a hunting round or this that and the other 